Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to reference music properly and I'm going to explain exactly why. So referencing other professional music when it comes to music production is super important. One of the reasons is sitting down in front of a blank project with no guidance or no direction can be one of the most intimidating things when it comes to music production. I'm going to be using Ableton Live 11, but it doesn't matter which door you use and it doesn't matter which genre of music you make either. It could be rock, could be house, could be drum and bass. Referencing is essential if you want to get to a professional level and I'm going to show you every Every step of the process in this video. Also, massive shout out to my Accelerator student, Kid Mike, who recently got released on Dirty Bird Records and supported by Claude Von Stroke. You can check out his new track below this video, and if you enjoy it, please share it and like. So without further ado, let's hop into the door and get it done. So I'd actually find a reference track before I start doing any production in general, but I want to show you with an existing track that I've done. So this is what I've created so far. Just a little piano house loop. And I want to get the mix and the master sounding comparable to other records in this genre. And this is how we set up our reference track. First thing to note, it's, it's essential to pick the right reference track. So if you're creating a piano house track, for example, don't pick a rock track for your reference track, pick another piano house track, ideally from within the last couple of years. So the production is at a modern level, the loudness is a modern level. So when people are listening to Spotify and it goes from one track into yours, there isn't a massive difference in frequencies and energy. And that applies for when a DJ plays it on the dance floor as well. You want yours to sound modern and comparable. So create a, an audio track in whichever door you're using. Bring in your reference track. For this, I'm gonna use MK17. So I'm just gonna drag it in, like so. And then the next thing we need to do is make sure that this is synchronized to our project. And the way to do that is double click on your track, zoom in and take this clip marker to the first transient in your track. Now, if your reference track has got a smooth intro, you're gonna to have to bring this further forward until you get to the first beat of the track. And the easiest way to find out the tempo is just look it up on Google. Just do a Google search, take this to the first beat of the track, like so. I know it's 120 BPM, so I can select 122 BPM there. And now this is in sync with my project, which makes referencing way easier. Next thing we have to sort out is the routing. So our track is going into the master channel, which is absolutely normal, but we want our reference track to be going to the external out. And that's because we're gonna be using effects on this master channel later on, especially in the mastering stage. And we don't want our reference track to be going through those same effects because it's already been mastered. So there are a couple of things we need to do at this stage. We need to set up a mono switch for both of these tracks. Now, the reason being, it's easier to reference levels and a frequency spread if your ears aren't being confused by the stereo field. And we will be getting to the stereo field later anyway, but it's really important and a game changer if you set up a mono switch. So on our master channel, I've just got a utility. I've set up a little keyboard shortcut to be option M. We'll make the whole track in mono. So let's just have a listen to how that sounds. That's stereo, press my mono switch, it's a mono. And we want to set up the exact same thing for our reference track as well. So I've now copied that and I need to make sure that it's got the exact same keyboard shortcut. And that's so when I hit my shortcut, both of those mono switches are going either on or off. Boom, really important that. Next thing we need to do is make the levels comparable because if you listen to our track and then switch over to the reference track, well, actually, let's find the right part of the track to reference, and that would be the busiest part with everything going on, much like we've got in our track. So that would be the chorus. Let's bring that in, just copy and paste it there. And we can just loop this section now, which is lovely. But I'm actually going to take the loop away from this first beat because that's where a cymbal crashes. So it's better to reference it from a couple of bars in And that's so we don't get distracted by that cymbal crash, which is like an incidental thing. We want to get the main big mix balanced. Anyway, that was a bit of a sidebar. So when we've got our mono switch, the next thing we need to do is get those comparable levels. So I'm gonna put in another utility. And if we measure the average volume of the reference track as it stands using this free plug in the Yuli and loudness meter, which you can download using the link below and play it through this, we can see that the average volume over time 
it's hitting about minus eight or minus seven and a half lux. Whereas if we go to our track and pop one on the master as well, open it up, we can hear ours or we can see ours is hitting about minus 20 and the other was hitting minus seven and a half. That's why there's such a difference in energy levels. So we're going to balance them out to both be about minus 18. And the reason being that when we've mixed our track, if it's peaky at about minus six, you don't need to worry too much about that. But, but minus 18 for an average volume is just a good rule of thumb to aim for when referencing. So let's go back to our reference track and just take down the volume of this utility until it's hitting about minus 18. And that will be usually about minus 12. Again, it doesn't have to be super accurate, just roughly the same area. What's more important is that our track is comparable in volume to this track. So we might actually have to boost ours a little bit. That's hitting minus 18.7. So we go back to ours, put on a utility. And the reason I'm not using the same utility for the mono switch as the uh, gain staging is because. If we switch this mono switch, we don't, well, you could, I suppose, but I just like to have different plugins for each separate purpose because then it just keeps things easier and I know exactly what each one is doing. So let's look at this Yulian loudness meter and we're just going to boost this up until we are hitting about minus 18 as well. Now that our track will have a similar energy level, maybe that's a little bit loud. So they're now comparably loud. The next thing that we want to do is check our frequency spread. We'll get back to the loudness later when we go through the mastering process, but we need to get make sure that the frequencies we're hitting are similar to those of our reference track because they're in the same genre. We want them to sound good when they're played next to each other. So let's go back to our reference track and we are going to use this free plugin. It's by Voxengo. It's called the Voxengo Span. And it's just a spectrum analyzer. You can use the spectrum analyzer from within your door, the stock one, but I prefer this one because it's resizable. And there are a few other things you can use it for as well. But let's look at what frequencies our reference track is hitting. And this is pretty usual. You'll see the bass will be hitting about where the maximum of the treble is hitting with a bit of a dip in the middle. It's going to vary slightly between different genres and different tracks, but that's more or less a, a desirable frequency spread. So if we now copy this and paste it on our master, we can open them side by side and see how ours compares. Now it's important to make sure that both of these are the same size and you haven't resized them like this because we want to actually compare. Now we've got the average levels about the same. We want to compare where our frequencies are hitting on this graph. So that's the reference track. Let's just allow ours to play as well. Okay, so let's have a look and see what's going on. Okay, I've already done a pretty good job of this mix. <laughs> because you can see here, this is peaking at about minus 43. Ours is about there as well. About minus 43, it's saying up there. And ours is hitting about the same on those high frequencies. Now, that's because I've already mixed this track uh, to a degree. So it would have been a better example if I'd chosen a poorly mixed track, but you can at least see what I'm looking out for and then I can adjust them accordingly. For instance, if our track was like this and then we compared them, you think, oh, that sounds pretty good. And I wouldn't really know that the kick and the bass was too low unless I opened up my reference track like that. And I'm doing this by ear as well as visual because if you rely on just one of them, you're not maximizing your capabilities to get the most accurate reference. So we want to be using our ears and our eyes. So here, I can see that our bass is way too low. So at that point, I'm going to go into my mix and I'm going to increase the low end until it looks about right, see? 
and I can hear it sounds a similar you know energy level as well now if you want extra help when it comes to the low end this is what you can do when you're referencing get an EQ on your track on your reference track that is take out the high end at about 130 Hertz and that's just going to allow the kick and the bass to pop through we're going to do that on our track and we're going to do it on our reference track so now this is what we're hearing you might need good headphones or monitors to hear that. So now I want to hear and see if my bass and kick is bringing the same level of energy. I mean, yeah, they are. However, if it was more like this, or my bass was like this, because I've now isolated the bass frequencies, I can hear that my bass is way too high here by switching between the two. So I want to get that balance about right. And again, I can actually use the analyzer for this, but if I'm doing that, I need to make sure this EQ happens before the analyzer. So let's do that for ours too. And now we can see what average volume theirs is hitting when it's just the bass and ours is a bit louder. There's this is almost minus 22. So I'm going to take this bass down a bit more because I know the kick's about the right level. And then let's do the audio check. Maybe my kick's a bit loud. My bass needs to be a bit louder. And again, I'm looking to hit about minus 21.8 here. That's pretty good. So now let's listen to it without the EQ on. Same with the reference track. And check the overall spread. Pretty good. And you can check in mono as well, as I said. Now, it's important to acknowledge that yours isn't gonna sound exactly the same because it's a different track. You've got different chords, you've got different sounds. But overall, we want it to be matching on loudness and on frequency spread. Now, when it comes to matching the loudness, this is what you'd really do in the mastering stage. So if we go to our reference track again, we can now turn off this utility that's been attenuating the volume and look and see what it's hitting. We already know it's about minus 7.7. I'm doing it in mono, that's fine. Okay, about minus eight. So now we want to get ours comparably loud as well. So I'm gonna use limiter for that, obviously. I'm gonna use the Pro L2, have it before my loudness meter, and I'm just gonna bring it up until it's hitting. There are other plugins I'm gonna use as well, um, like compression and stuff, but if you want a lesson on mastering, you can click the link that's popping up now. But I'm just really looking to increase this loudness. That might be a little bit loud actually. And this way you can actually get your music sounding better and louder than your reference tracks if you're careful about it. So ours is actually banging up. What? Let's take it down a bit, just dial it back a little bit. more comparable cool we've referenced the frequency range we've referenced the loudness now we want to reference the stereo field now the best tool for this 
is the free Ozone Imager 2. It comes, you can get it with the link below this. And unfortunately, I haven't actually registered mine because I've just got a new computer, but it should work for a few seconds anyway. So let's use a demo. That's all you really need it for. So if we put it on ours, so we've got our master track here and we've got the reference track here over to the left. So we need to make sure ours is showing up similar here. They're both completely narrow because it's in mono at the moment. So I've just pressed my mono switch and now let's have a look. So ours is already comparable. But if it wasn't, perhaps I'd use a multiband stereo imager from Ozone uh, and just make sure that those stereo spreads are, that ours is at least as wide as the reference track and you could even push it a bit wider sometimes if you want. So that is my step-by-step -step referencing process. I use this in every single track. I use it from start to finish. I use it in the composition. I use it in the mixing. I use it in the mastering. And I teach my students to do it too. Bear in mind, I've been doing this for a long time. When students say, I don't want to use reference music because I want to be original. All they're doing a few months down the line, they come back and they say, I should have just been using reference tracks from the start. So the sooner that you can get over this idea that you're copying other people's music just because you're referencing it, the faster you are going to proceed. So I really hope you've enjoyed this. If you want to have more tutorials like this, let me know in the comments. I want to know. And you can download my mixing guide for free below this video and please do subscribe and like this video if you like it and I will catch you soon. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget you can check out my other video on how to mix a track in 30 seconds as well. That's very popular for mixing quickly so do check it out and yeah I'll catch you soon. Have a good one. Bye.